good evening. Such a wonderful opportunity once again uh, to share with you this evening devotion. I've uh, been looking forward for this. Uh, one of the reasons is because I get to interact with you and you're able to share the Word of God together. I want to go straight to the Word of God. I want to, I want to read from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 38, uh, from verse 1. If you are reading with me, uh, we can read Isaiah 38 from verse 1. It says, About that time Hezekiah became uh, deadly ill, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the God, Remember, O Lord, how I have always tried to be faithful to you and do what is pleasing in your sight. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. Then this message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David says, I have heard your prayers and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life and I will res rescue you and this city from the king of Assyrian. Yes, I will defend this. I want to, us to pray together then. I'm going to give some few illustration uh, concerning this passage. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we can we can just uh, interact with your word shortly. I just pray, Lord, even as I, as I share or encourage people who are watching, I pray that this word will be meaningful to them. Uh, I want to share shortly about call to pray. Call to pray. First, before even I go far, I want you to know that Hezekiah was a man of prayer. Hezekiah was a man of prayer. Why? Because when this, this sad news came, uh, the first thing that he did, he had to call upon the name of the Lord. You know, he reminds me of the scripture in the book of Psalms 50, verse 50. It says, call upon me in the days of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Most of the time when you hear sad news, uh, most of the time, most, most of the time people will tend to maybe call uh, their family members or close friends. Uh, even when, when calamities and things are happening, uh, most Kenyans you've heard about this. Uh, most of the time in our news, serikali, 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 idea. And, and when, when people are going through stuff, uh, most of the time they tend to forget God. Um, sometimes I've watched and I've seen, even among the, 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 the young people that I work with, uh, they, they really choose God last. But you see, in this passage that you've read uh, from the book of um, uh, Isaiah 38 and the story of Hezekiah. When Hezekiah heard this news, you know, he, he didn't call a committee, you know, a committee to, to start discussing how he will, after he dies and, and who will take over. He, 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 he knew the most important thing is to call upon God. And he went to his knees and started crying out to God. You know, Hezekiah's story should teach us that prayer to believers should be a lifestyle should be a lifestyle. It should not be something that, that we do when uh, bad things have happened. Uh, it should not be something that we do when, even when, when good things have happened because uh, some people pray when, when, when something miraculous has taken place in their families or in their lives. Some people even, uh, you know, come to church probably uh, when something good is happening, maybe weddings or or maybe your son has graduated. But, but prayer should be a lifestyle. It should be something that we do in our day-to-day -day life. And, and I know most people, the way they define prayer is uh, communicating to God. Some people say prayer is communion to God. Uh, but prayer is actually talking to God. As human beings, we are independent to God. And we should learn to talk to God in our day-to-day -day life. When we wake up in the morning, at noon time. In the evening or even every time you know we are not limited on how we should pray you know because prayer to us is should be a lifestyle uh, in the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 12 the Bible says then you shall call on me 
and pray to me and I will listen to you. Then you shall call upon me. It means that God is always waiting for us to pray. God is always waiting for us to relate with him, to have that communion to him. And when he says that when you, when you pray to him, he will listen. He will listen. I don't know what you might be going through right now. Uh, probably you're trusting God for something or probably uh, there's something you're going through as a person. Uh, God says that when you pray, he will listen. He will listen to your prayers and he will answer your prayers. In the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians, verse 5, 16 and 8, to 18, he says, I pray without ceasing. We should pray without giving up. We should pray continually. Some other version says, pray continually. Some other version says, pray without ceasing. So it means that prayer should be something that we do every time, every time. I personally, I have developed this, uh, uh, this attitude in my life that I should always uh, uh, pray uh, when I wake up and seek God's guidance. Even if I have already planned for the day, I should always pray and seek God for guidance because sometimes my plan may not be in line in the will of God. I've always, uh, uh, I've always taught uh, my youth and the teens the importance of prayer. You know, I always tell them that even before you call me, you should always pray. Whenever you are having a problem, uh, don't be quick to call me. Uh, be quick, fast to pray. Then you can call me and then we can, we can see how uh, we can handle this situation in life. Uh, in my family, I've always uh, encouraged people the importance of praying. Because sometimes uh, uh, if you don't teach people how to pray, if you don't teach people, if you don't learn to point people to God, people will always think that you are the one who has the solution for the calamities or challenges that they are facing in life. But the truth of the matter is that we pastors don't have solutions for you. It is actually God who has solutions to you. We, ju we are just here uh, so that we may be used by God to fulfill his purpose in your life. Uh, there's a verse that I really like and I love so much, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Do not be anxious for nothing but in everything, through prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Present your request to God. You know, do not be anxious, you know. I know, I know sometimes uh, we are anxious and that's the reality of life as human beings. Uh, sometimes when, when we hear bad news or, or sometimes when we, 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 we know, you know, they, we, unexpected information comes, we'll be anxious. But also Philippians 4, 6 just tells us that, that number one, when you hear about uh, this sad news or, you know, something is about to happen, number one is to just first find yourself in the presence of God. Find yourself in the presence of God. Like the story of Ezekiah uh, that we can learn from today even as I finish is that it is important for us to know that God is the only one who is able to solve uh, the challenges that we face in life. God is the only one who comes through for us when good things have happened, uh, even when bad things have happened. God is the only person that we should run to. You know, we should always put God number one, not our parents, not the government, not even pastors. God number one. God should always be number one. You should always consider to pray first before you call anyone. You should always consider to pray first before you make any decision. You should always consider to pray first before you do anything else. So I am calling upon you to pray. I'm calling upon you to pray. I know some of you have been praying at home. I know some of you have been praying uh, and asking God for solutions concerning the challenges uh, we face. I know some of you have been praying uh, concerning uh, you know, uh, the needs that you need. But God is calling us to even pray more. God is calling us to, to pray. And even if you can fast, God is calling us to pray and fast. God is calling us to, to know to have that communion with him. God is calling us to connect to him. God is calling us to walk with him. And we can only do this if we pray. I hope I have connected to you through this word. I hope that this word has encouraged you to get more zeal uh, to pray. I hope you've been empowered to pray more. And I believe that when all of us we are praying, then uh, God is able to even do greater things than than we are expecting. So I want to pray with you. Uh, then uh, I believe that uh, we will continue to fellowship together. Let's pray. 
Father, I want to thank you for giving us uh, this short word of encouragement, the importance of prayer. And you have called everyone to pray. You have not called pastors only to pray. Uh, you have not called only prophets to pray. You have called everyone to pray. Those who are born again Christians uh, are supposed to be praying, Lord. And I pray that people will, people will uh, wake up and pray, oh God. People will wake up and connect to you. People will wake up and, and start having that uh, strong communion with you. And I pray, oh Lord, through prayer, you'll be able to give us uh, ideas, ways of how to, how to live even in this life. My Lord and my God, all solutions come from you. And I pray our solution will only come from you. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I hope to hear from you. I hope to talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye.